wearer data from a specific wearer station. Because it goes right, because the API will call from all the wearer stations in Singapore. Or how about I want to scrap one long data for API. So when I look at the web page, right, it only shows me how to scrap by date. But then how do I scrap by month? So when I look at more detail, right? This is how it looks like when you look at the API documentation. You only get call, request, date, and date time. So let's say, um, let's say I want to scrap data for November 30th, yesterday. Then it will be the API, the, the API date, and then the date. But then when I try to and try the API, right? This is what I got. I got a, I like oh, okay, the station ID, where's the station, and then I got the items, a lot of things. And then when I try to extract the data in the usual way using a pandas or a JSON, expecting to get a very nice data frame with all the all the readings from all the weather stations being put I see on the table. But unfortunately, it's a nested JSON format. So what actually happens is that when I try to do my usual read JSON and extract and I try to extract all the info from the JSON, what I get is um, two columns. So one column is the timestamp. The other column is a whole bunch of this on. Then as much as I try to extract the info from the JSON in, a, in the standardized way, I can't seem to find a very elegant solution. So there's no, there's so, unfortunately for pandas, you can't really extract the info from a nested JSON file. So this is what I got. Can I use it? I don't think so. All my info is stuck somewhere in there. And I need to know how to extract it. So, this is my reaction. So when we talk about open data, right? We say, oh, it's available. The government has already put up it on the portal. You can use it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, then the government says, I put the data up there. You developer can just use it any way you want. But then, is it really accessible? Well, let's look at what the Open Knowledge Foundation says about open data. The data must be available as a whole and at no more than a reasonable reproduction cost. The data must also be available in a convenient and modifiable format. So, yes, number one, yes, it's available. Yeah, it's available, really available for anyone to use. It's for free. You can just go to the internet and download it. Yes, it's readable in a way because it is in a machine readable format, like JSON, JSON file. So, yes, it's standardized. Yeah, so that means that whatever data I got is available is readable, but is it really accessible? Because when we talk about accessibility, right? Open data is only useful if and only if it is shared in a way that everyone, and I really mean everyone, even if you're a grandmother, can actually read, use, and understand. So do you think that the JSON, so do you think that the JSON in the nested JSON format is something that your grandmother can understand? No, I don't think so, right? If not everyone can understand how to use the available data, do you think that the data is really open? Think about it. So I thought about it and realized, no, I can do something about it, right? I, I code, 
I can take my way through. So maybe I should build a tool whereby not just uh, not just I can use, but everyone, even a non-developer, can use. So this is my idea. So I end up creating my own scripting tool to solve this problem. So this is a screenshot of my GitHub page of a very simple API scraper. So what I use is I use a Python request library. So what so what do we what, what is request? Request is the Python library for humans to send HTTP requests. Because your grandfather cannot understand HTTP. So you need a translator such that it can translate what you or your grandmother wants into something that the machine can understand, translate it to HTTP, communicate with the, HTTP, the, the API, and then get the data for you to use. So a little bit about the data.gov for SP, whether data is best the thing. The, the, what I have currently done is to support the API for air temperature and rainfall. Because those two are the most important ones that really matters when we are deciding whether we want to go out, go to the beach, or we want to hide at home, hide in the shopping mall. Because in Singapore, it can react really hot. And if, and if the weather is too hot and it's always raining, people will decide to stay indoors. So this kind of info is very important for us. And how I scrap it is that I will scrap for a ton continuous time range, not just for one day, and not just for all the weather stations, but I want to scrap for a specific weather station so that I don't need to end up trying to dig through the whole sea of data just to find the flight, just to find the weather for where I am. Because let's say, right, if I want to go to if I want to go to eat, like a beach, and I want to know whether it's going to be raining at the beach. But then, if, but then, right, if I scrap using the API itself, I'm going to get weather station data for everywhere, including the beach. And it's going to take quite a long time to try to get the data and to extract what I want. So the benefit is that you will be able to have a, you will be able to have a more targeted way to extract the data. So now I I talk a lot about what I like what I have created, but it will be best to showcase what you can do with a demo. And then I would like to extract data up to yesterday. So that would be six. And then I would like to choose what type of data do I want to extract from. So let's say I want to know the air temperature for Singapore yesterday. So I will press one. Okay. This might take a while. You can see 
that I'm currently using a command line interface, right, with a Python script. And then what I need to do is just to define where to start, where to end, and then choose where to spread from. So this might take a bit of a time, so we will leave it to run first. Venue, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the weather station that I've chosen is S24, which is Changi Weather Station. behind the scene. So let's say I run a, let's say I run a, I run a script here. data is at the end. 
But when I actually do the request, my metadata is at the bottom, and then my data is actually at the top. So there is this inconsistency between what is actually in the documentation and what is actually happening when you are doing the request. about this step, just a bit of a background risk demo. So the objective is to extract the trend and scenarity. So what is, is trend? Trend is actually what is the, so that trend is actually like what is like changing over the past few years. Seasonality is about whether there are recurrent patterns in the weather. So let's see whether we can see any trend and seasonality in our data. Anyone here want to make a guess how many seasons would there be? 
or will there be any similarity or trends in uh, Singapore and the data? You want to give me a guess? Would that be in Singapore? One season. One season. One season. Any five seasons? <laughs> uh, any other answers? Two seasons? Two seasons? Okay. I think in the interest of time, let's just show the result. just show the box plot in terms of the similarity. So after some analysis, right, we realized, I realized that you can actually see like a bit of a trend across the bus. So from January to December, you can see that the temperature rises from January all the way to about May. So May seems to be one of the hotter months. And then you draw it, and then you also see like a bit of like rise in temperature somewhere around September, October, and then the temperature also drops. So in terms of rainfall, you also see a similar shape, like some pattern. So in a way, you do have some similarity in your diagram, in, in your weather. So to conclude, actually, yes, you do have season in Singapore. So there are two very, so actually you do have four seasons. Just that there are two very clear seasons and there are two other and then there are two other seasons which are not so clear. So the so the answers for how many seasons does Singapore have? There are two answers, depending on how you look at it. 